G'day everyone, welcome to this weekend update for uh, the Australian market and also for global markets as well. Now last week I put out what I believe is the most important message that, uh, that I have in the last couple of years and that's the opportunities that exist overseas. The Australian market has been uh, pretty flat this year, uh, even some of the good stocks are really not uh, trending and there's not a lot of value to be had in the Australian market, certainly not in a low risk sort of way but there are fabulous opportunities overseas and I just want to repeat the first couple of slides that I did last week because I just think they're so important but I'm also going to extend that information a little bit further as well so let's jump into it so first of all uh, the points I made last week were that central banks are providing a very positive environment and it does eventually end up causing asset bubbles but I believe that's quite a way away and selected stocks are rising not because of the central bank induced liquidity and the low interest rates, but because of their very powerful fundamentals and some are still very cheap. So when you can buy a stock that's growing its earnings at 25 or 30% a year over the last five years and looks set to continue doing that into the future, and you can buy it for a PE a, a P -E ratio between let's say 10 and 15, then that's something that's almost impossible to achieve in Australia. And that's really got nothing to do with central bank activity. These are just stocks that are absolutely in the sweet spot of the right sectors in the right sort of countries. There's also another dynamic that's happening. It happens all the time. You get sectors that fall out of favor, disastrously out of favor, as we've seen a lot of the resource sectors over the last couple of years, particularly gold and coal and uranium and at various times also nickel. Now those hated sectors eventually move back into a new bull market and I'm not saying that all those sectors are about to move into a new bull market but certainly things look pretty good for gold but eventually they do. Now the key drivers are that there are selected sectors in America and also over in other countries overseas that have almost guaranteed huge momentum for at least the next five to ten years. Now, nothing is ever completely guaranteed, but uh, when you see the sectors that I'm referring to, I think you'll acknowledge that these are sectors that really are going to be uh, extremely high growth and well supported. Now, ultra low interest rates are here to stay for quite a few years, and that makes stock dividends uh, highly attractive relative to fixed interest. And so a lot of people are being forced uh, into the stock market that otherwise wouldn't do it. Share price gains in some cases have, has not caught up to the growth in, in profits. So unlike Australia, where it's actually quite tough to find good value, uh, there is plenty of good value in selected pockets overseas. Now, you make the most money when two things occur. First of all, earnings are growing strongly. And secondly, the price earnings multiples are actually expanding. So let's say you've got a company that's trading on a PE of 10, and it's growing its earnings, so year by year, the price would follow that if the PE stayed at 10. But you'll find that the PE does tend to rise over time as well in those sectors that are in favour. And so with earnings growing and PE multiples getting bigger, the impact on the price is quite significant. Now what sectors will be the big winners in America and, and overseas? Well, the first one, I don't think there's any much doubt about it. The US shale gas and oil industry and all the support services that go with that have got enormous momentum and have got a long, long way to go. If you look back just three or four years to what people were saying about uh, peak oil and about the amount of gas that could be recovered, uh, it's been quite an amazing technological uh, improvement that's allowed them to get more, far more oil and gas out of the, uh, the shale than had previously been thought possible. Another area of terrific technological development is in the, the digital revolution, the, the internet, semiconductors, and just an exploding array of um, different applications. The third area is in pharmaceutical and biotechnology and healthcare, uh, particularly in America, but not exclusively in America some fantastic advancements there. And there's also terrific opportunities in American housing as well, if you know how to go about that through the stock market. 
Gold, I believe, is well poised to uh, to make significant gains in the future. And there's also selected parts of Europe and Asia that are still significantly undervalued. So there really are a number of potentially uh, big winning sectors out there. Now, turning to the American market, last week the S&P index uh, was steady on the week, uh, but there's still no signs of weakness. It's just showing amazing strength. We saw the NASDAQ index and the Russell 2000 index uh, even stronger than the S&P. And if the market was about to lose momentum and fall over, then those indices would not be setting new highs. Uh, we've also seen significant profit upgrades and also some mergers and acquisitions. And personally, I've had um, almost one a week where a stock has risen overnight by between 15 and 30 percent. And that's purely been because they've upgraded their earnings or there's been an acquisition or, or something. I, I would say that I've had at least four or five of them in the last month or so. And uh, it's a very nice addition to what are already pretty strong trends. So let's take a look at the S&P index to start with. So you can see it, um, it formed a little shelf here on the week, so it didn't actually make any gains, but it's at the all-time highs. Friday night finished on its highs. Uh, Thursday night was down just a fraction, but recovered off some lows. Wednesday was on the highs. It's really only a Tuesday night that, um, that the markets uh, were, looked in, in any way negative. So the S&P basically still at its all-time high. We go to the NASDAQ and it's trading at new all-time highs as well. And you can see quite a strong finish. It actually had quite a good week and finished off quite well. And the Russell 2000, it's, it's a little bit below its highs, but still pretty robust sessions on both Wednesday and, and Friday. So tremendous strength in the American market. Turning now to the Australian market, which frankly is, uh, has been uh, pretty boring and, and uh, low in activity and low in uh, volatility. Um, our index finished 20 points up for the week and there's really been no change in the index since October. And the trading range within the index itself is getting tighter and tighter and we're seeing the same thing in quite a number of stocks. So let's just take a quick look at the ASX 200. So if we pan back a bit, you can see that here we, here's where the index was in October of last year. So that's uh, about nine months now and the index really, it's bobbed up and down, but it hasn't really gone very far. And you can see that the trading range has become really quite tight and compressed. And that's pretty similar to what we're seeing in a lot of stocks. We've still got the great performers, the, the terrific stocks of the last couple of years, and they're still consolidating. So there's really nothing that's trending at the moment. Now, turning to commodities, uh, gold was flat on the week, uh, but it is encouraging that it was able to hold the recent strong gains from the week before, in fact, the two weeks before. Uh, normally, I would have expected gold to have pulled back, but it was able to hold those gains. So another good sign. Uh, the other thing is, of course, that stocks are outperforming gold, which is something we didn't see before. Uh, and we've also got silver outperforming gold as well. So there's really three things that are evident now that we haven't seen when there's been previous little gold spikes over the last 12 months. So I really think that this time um, it's it could be the real the real thing this time. And we'll be heading into a new bull market. Silver managed to gain 1% on the week, so that was uh, pretty promising. Copper gained further to $3.16, so it's almost back to uh, where it has spent most of the last year. And crude oil, of course, uh, with the uh, disruption in the Middle East, has uh, been holding previous gains at, uh, at 107. We'll just take a quick look at the copper chart, so you can see we've, we're almost back now to the 320 mark. So let's take a look at, uh, at gold and silver. First of all, we'll look at silver. So you can see silver still within this phase one base. We had the massive decline from $50, got back to 18, 
clearly in a phase one base and we did have a bit of a down sloping trend channel but we've now broken we've now broken out above that just need silver to close just a little bit higher up around the uh, the 2250 mark and it'll be looking much better this is gold we'll look at gold on a weekly chart so you can see still within the phase one sitting around about the middle of that phase one base but certainly gold if you look at it on a daily chart uh, we had two strong weeks and the gains maintained last week let's turn now to the GDX index and similarly still in a phase one base but I can tell you particularly when you drill down because this index is really looking at the uh, the top 20 largest gold stocks in the in the world when you drill down and look at some of the individual gold stocks uh, in America uh, there's the gains have been significantly greater than that but this is the GDX index it was down a little bit on Friday night but same sort of pattern pretty robust improvement in that index so signs looking pretty good for gold so just to finish off um, my absolutely strong message to uh, to members and also to uh, to non-members is that you if you're not thinking about uh, accessing what's available overseas then you are severely limiting your ability to make profits there's just so many great opportunities it's where the guaranteed drivers are um, we just don't have the momentum from an economic point of view and we don't have we just don't have some of the sectors we don't have a shale gas industry we don't have a semiconductor industry and we don't have very much in the way of biotechnology either so tremendous opportunities overseas you should stay with the strongest trends um, especially in America uh, the results that I've been getting personally have been fabulous and uh, and I'd really like to see you have the opportunity to uh, uh, to tuck into those as well still looking for a bit of a quick pullback in gold stocks they've they've run hard for a couple of weeks it'd be good to see a little bit of a pullback there's also several ways to play gold stocks from uh, pretty safe with it but with a good return uh, through to the, the more speculative end so uh, a number of different ways to to uh, leverage yourself into what I believe will be a new bull market in gold uh, I'd really uh, encourage you to think about for non-members uh, joining our group you've got two options I can either help you do it yourself so I can provide the information the guidance the support and the training so that you can do it yourself or if you don't want to do that then I actually have a facility now where I can uh, trade and invest on your behalf but whichever way you decide to go I would certainly be thinking very seriously about getting exposure overseas I think this is also a period of some of the biggest resource opportunities um, that I can remember in quite some time now new bull markets are infrequent uh, the last uh, the start of the last really big bull market in commodities was more than a decade ago so these sort of things don't come along very often um, and the gains are typically huge for the people that get in in the first six months or so of new bull markets particularly in resources uh, the gains are almost always multi hundreds of percent and sometimes thousands of percent but you do have to get in early if you want to wait until everybody starts to think that it's a good thing to do then you have missed a significant part of the rise low commodity prices inevitably inevitably lead to supply deficits it's just the way that it works because the highest cost producers get pushed out of business so low commodity prices cause a fall in supply and that means that we're going to reach a new equilibrium and that's where new bull markets start but the problem is and it's a fact of life that most traders stop watching because everyone is so negative on that sector and in, that's just the time that you should be looking and not uh, and not um, forgetting about it because the the markets just out of favor which ones uh, precious metals in a number of different areas shale resources for oil and gas the opportunities there are stunning there's been some terrific gains but again there's a number of different ways to play this you don't have to play it just through 
uh, oil and gas producers. Coal is also another sector that is still in uh, huge demand and the current pricing has forced a, a lot of supply out of the market because it's just uh, too high cost. So coal it hasn't done anything yet but is also well worth watching. And again I just make the point there's more than one way to play these resource opportunities. You don't have to buy resource companies. There's several different ways to do it. So for anyone, any non-members that would like more information uh, about what I do and particularly the opportunity for, uh, for me to assist you in, in accessing the wonderful opportunities overseas, uh, there's some general information on our website, but I'd encourage you to email me direct on, uh, on that email address there. That's it for this weekend. Cheers.